Chapter 3, My Date with a Vampire. Later that week, you're at the locker robotically swapping your books between classes while hopefully lost in thought. I gotta find Gabriel and tell him about the evidence I found in Mom's office. And while I'm at it, maybe I can ask him to give me some pointers on how to tell her that her boss is a vampire. With a sigh, you slam your locker door shut, only to jump at the unexpected sight of Cass leaning against the locker next to yours. Boo. Ah! In shock, you drop your books all over the floor and Cass cackles loudly. Down the hall, you see your friend from the woods party fighting back a smile at your expense. You stoop to pick them up, carefully dodging the hallway's foot traffic. Gas looks down at you with a mischievous grin, sending your blood boiling over. Do you and your lackey really think that's funny? What's the matter? Don't tell me I scared you. Scared me, please. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Hate to say it, but I'll take a more than a lackluster game of peekaboo to have me shaken in my boots. Cass simply raises her eyebrows at your boldness, but you hold your gaze unflinchingly. Finally, she chuckles. You got gut, Snooker. I'll give you that. Lightning fast, Cass spins down to swipe up one of your books just before it, uh, open pages meet a wandering foot. You stand to reach out for it, but she holds it out of your grasp. But it's your heart that gives you away. I can hear you practically beating it out of your chest. Your mouth falls open in shock, but before you can respond, Gabrielle walks up behind Cass, plucks the book out of her hand, and returns it to you in one smooth motion. Back off, Cass. It's too early in the morning for your special brand of intimidation. Hello to you, too. I was wondering when you'd show up to play the knight in shining armor, but you retire your chain mail. Cass's eyes examine you from the ground up, and for a moment your skin burns under her gaze. Parker can save herself. You're right. But have you ever thought maybe I want Gabriel to save me? You step up beside him and take his hand, your heart giving a little jolt as he looks down at you with wide eyes. You know, as long as he's up for the job. He laces his fingers with yours before giving your hand a squeeze, and you can't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Gabriel Aldehard reporting for duty. You meet his eyes and smile warms you, leaving you feeling comforted and protected until the sound of gaggling breaks the moment. Thanks for that, I was looking for the most nauseating way to start my day. Oh, she frowned. You open your mouth to respond only to find yourself drowning out by the warning bell above you. As it finishes, you turn to Gabriel with a sigh. Let's just get to Phillips' class. The sooner the day is over, the better. The two of you slip past, leaving Cass uh, behind. And as you near the end of the hall, you come level with her friend, who watches you pass with an unreadable look. Not one for many words. Without a word, Gabriel slips between the two of you, blocking his eye line. Come on. You still feel the prick of being watched at the back of your neck as the two of you enter the classroom and take your seats in the back. Good afternoon, everyone. I am a redundant teacher at every school. Today we're going to be diving into the exciting world of foreign exchange market. And Mr. Phillips gets to the day's economic lessons. You tilt your head towards Gabriel's Quietly speaking, we gotta talk about my mom. I found her notes on the murder, and I'm scared she's gonna be the biggest target than she already is. What'd you find? Mr. Aldehard, Miss Reese, less talking, more converting to the Turkish lira, please. Embarrassment burns, so you and Gabriel sits up straight as the rest of the class turns to stare. Sorry, Mr. Phillips. It was my fault. Mr. Phillips gives a curt nod. Now, as I was saying... While you try to focus on the lesson, Gabriel speeds through the assignment before leaning towards you, speaking more softly this time. Hey, Yardi, uh, don't look up for uh, this. But uh, why don't I pull some strings and get us out of here? Phillips will never let us leave without after he just started the lecture. Plus, you're the class president. You're supposed to be setting an example, not ditching. It's good for a cause. I can teach you something that'll make you a lot less jumpy around here. I'm not... He fixes you with a serious gaze and you stop mid-sentence. Okay, maybe I am, but how can you help me with that? 
Not to brag, but I do know a lot of self-defense moves that'll help uh, even the playing field against the next time Cass or any other vampire tries to get rough, but just say the word and I'll show you. Violence does seem to be the only way to speak to a vampire's language. Learning to fight back would be a big help, so show me what you've got. Excellent. He grins at you, mischief in his eyes, before putting on an innocent expression and raising his hand. Mr. Phillips, can Parker and I be excused? We have something important to do in the for the festival planning. Mr. Phillips barely glances up from his whiteboard. That's fine. Go ahead. Giving each other a subtle smirk, you and Gabriel gather your things and head out of the classroom. After a short trip down the hall, Gabriel leads you into a student government room. Welcome to my home away from home. I spend way more time here than anyone else, so I'm able to store a few things here. He goes over to a cabinet and pulls out a duffel bag. Uh, what did you mean by showing me a few moves? Are you, um, just looking for an excuse to spend time with me? Grins, swinging the bag over his shoulder and stepping closer to you. I might be. But why not both? After all, teaching you to keep yourself safe ensures that I get to spend even more time with you in the future. Very practical. I like that in the guy. Good to know. So, do you train all the girls to fight in the middle of the schoolroom? Just the ones I like, but really. Laughing, he tugs on a cord above your heads, revealing a trap door and pull down ladder. One of the perks of spending so much time around her. You get to know all the school's little secrets after you. You climb up the ladder, which shakes a little as you go. Gabriel places a hand on your hip, steadying you. Don't worry, I've got you. No, he's gonna let you fall after, you know, spending a diamond choice. Reaching the top, you climb up onto a rooftop garden overlooking the woods behind the school. The flowers are vibrant in the afternoon sun and it feels like you can see miles of trees ahead of you. Wow, this is beautiful. Mm, thought you might like it up here. It's where I come when I just uh, need a break from everyone. He steps up beside you, and for a few moments you stand shoulder to shoulder looking out at the softly rustling tree tops. But then he lets out a sharp breath, and you can sense his focus shifting. <sighs> Not many people know about this place, which makes it a great place for a covert training sesh. You feel a nudge and look down and see him holding a pair of training gloves. You take them grinning in anticipation. Just a heads up, I'm not much of a fighter. You've got your work cut out for you. Eh, please. With the way you stood up to Cass in the hall, you're a total fighter material. Eh, but a vampire attacker is going to be stronger and faster than you, so you'll have to be on your toes. His legs spread hip width apart. His knees in a slight bend. This is a stable fight stance. You'll want to have a low center of gravity so you can keep your footing in a fight. Make sure your feet are apart for you with your dominant foot a bit forward to help your fat balance. I need more of a hands-on. You try and keep the smirk off your face, attempting to look confused instead. Can you fix my stance for me, Mr. Vampire Fighter? A slow grin spreads across Gabriel's face, and he nods, moving to stand beside you. Since you ask so nicely, his hands move to your hips, his touch initially soft, but becoming more firm as you adjust your body into a correct stance. Your heart races as you feel his warm breath on your neck when he speaks. There, now you're perfect. Right back at you. Mm, let's get started. We're going to focus on some basic blocking and dodging. As he says that, he begins to demonstrate a few different moves, ducking and swinging faster than your eyes can keep up with. Got it. Um... He laughs, striking a hand through his hair. Oh, don't worry, I'll walk you through it nice and slow. He steps in front of you, gently holding your wrists and lifting your fists so they're positioned in front of your face. Alright, now when you're in a fight, it's important to always be protecting your face at all times. You take the opportunity to study him up close, admiring the way his long eyelashes kiss the top of his cheek as his eyes focus on your positioning. He looks up at you, catching you staring in your stomach and does a flip. Your cheeks start to heat as he smiles awfully at you. Mm, just like that. Now let me show you some defensive moves. Just like that? Yeah, okay. Hands leaving yours, Gabriel walks through the sequence. You go through the moves like a dance, practicing each duck and turn, swing until it feels natural. Dang, I'm getting it. You're a great teacher. But you can't really think I stand a chance if I have to deal with a vampire again, do you? 
You got away from Cass in the woods, you made it out of the vampire's lair. You might think it's luck, but I think that means something. You aren't meant to be a victim in all of this, so yes, I think you stand a chance. But you're still in danger, and I don't want to see you get hurt. This is the least I can do to make a... To make that a chance of fighting one. His words hit you hard. Here you are, two humans who know a deadly secret, and he's doing everything he can to help you through it. With a rush of gratitude, you nudge him, hoping to show your appreciation by lightening the moon. Next time we go to a party where our lives are in mortal peril, I'll definitely be the one to save you. He lets out a laugh, just as you're hoped for. Come on, I think you're ready to spar with me. I promise I won't hurt you. Oh, you shouldn't. But, uh, shouldn't I be promising you that? I am a natural, after all. I see you've got your trash talking down, Pat. Hang on a second, though. I'm working up a sweat. He casually tugs his shirt over his head, leaving your jaw drop to the sight of his sweat glistening abs. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> you let out a whistle looking him up and down. Thanks for the show. Mm, you are shameless. I'm not a piece of meat, Parker. There's more to me than this perfect body. Oh, please. You did this on purpose, and I'm not complaining one bit. Now look sharp. You take a swing, and he racks in a blink of an eye, sh blocking your strike with an exa exhilarating laugh. Pulling a fast one on me? I like it. Just hope you're ready for what uh, you walked into. He is careful and consistent as he takes over, leading your sparring match, giving you time to read his movements and react. When he swings, you dodge. When he parries, you follow up with another move, where you gain confidence with each pass, and your pace picking up the back and forth coming more naturally. I've definitely found a worthy opponent. It's like you're reading my mind. Maybe that's because we have such a great connection. That or I'm studying you very carefully. You flick your gaze up and down his toned body, and he smiles bashfully. You use the opportunity to try and roundhouse kick, but he blocks it at the very last moment. Nice distraction, but I can do that too. He slows down slightly, and it's like every move he makes is designed to emphasize his athletic body. His sweat shine muscles rippling and gleaming with each strike. Not bad. Not bad at all. Something you realize that this is uh, his fist is coming at you fast. <laughs> okay, whatever this fuck. You dock quickly, and then let him catch you in a hole, pulling you tight against his chest. Uh oh, looks like you got me. You feel his racing hard against your back and lean deeper in his hole, your stomach swooping as he tightens his armor on your middle. We should train more uh, like this uh, more often. I definitely agree. After a few more rounds of sparring, you stop to guzzle down some water, taking a seat on the roof. He drops down heavily next to you, swiping a hand across his forehead. Phew, this beats a gym class any day. Can I have a sip? You hand him the water bottle, feeling the heat of his hand as his fingers brush generously against yours. You can't help watch as he brings the bottle to his lips, stepping the head back for a long sip. Your eyes catch on the bob of his Adam's apple before trailing down his chiseled planes of his chest. Thanks. Drag your eyes back to his face to find a knowing grin there. Your face flames as you take the bottle back from him, your heart skipping a beat as he lets his fingers drag against yours. Not that this isn't fun, but shouldn't we get back before someone starts to wonder where we are? Hang on, I have one more thing for you first. He pulls out a piece of cloth from his bag and folds it, and revealing a silver key with an A on the handle. You frown in confusion as he hands it to you. Silver is the greatest way to even the playing field with vampires. One touch and there'll be agony. You remember Cass's screams as she was punished with a silver brand and the gruesome sight of her scars. You tighten your hand around the key. Crazy how something so small can be so powerful against literal monsters. Well, I'd feel a lot better if you had some silver on you at all times. Somewhere inconspicuous. He covers your hand with his own, giving you a squeeze and you offer him a small smile. Thank you, Gabriel. Not just for the key, but for taking me here for training. I feel more prepared. I'm still scared, but I feel more powerful, too. Uh, like, I have a chance now if things get ugly with the vampires. You've got the key, literally and figuratively. You've got me, and you've got your own bravery. Not to mention that killer roundhouse kick, the vampires had better be scared. 
I appreciate the vote of confidence. You get your feet and hold your hand up to help him up as well. Now, come on. We've got 15 minute break between uh, classes, and I'm buying you whatever you want from the vending machine as thanks. Ugh, whatever I want. Damn, that's giving me too much power. He takes your hand, and they let you pull him up. The two of you head back to the trap door with a laugh. He's shrugging his shirt back on as you go. After school, you make your way to the gym to find him, Jade, and Aiden, making signs to advertise the Autumn Festival. Am I in the right place? Oh, well, okay. Well, it seems they're redo using her as well. Parker, Gabriel told us you'd be uh, joining our motley little crew. Ah, uh, you're just in time to save me from critiquing Jade's octopus drawing. It's a Ferris wheel. I could totally see that. It's even got a little basket on its tentacles. Feeling any better? Like I'm ready for anything. Oh, that's what I like to hear. All right, you guys, once we finish up with these, we'll need to split up and... Before you can finish, the gym door bangs open. Astoria drags Cass in by the arm. Ouch! My arm isn't detachable, you know. Astoria ignores her, opting instead to shove her into the empty spot on your left before fixing Gabrielle with a look that could melt steel. Mr. Adelhard, I have a new recruit for you. Uh, actually, we're full up. I wasn't asking. Put Miss Harlow to work. Don't let her leave before the committee meeting is adjourned. Are we clear? Crystal. I like how it says Gabe on his name. I guess it's short for Gabriel. As Astoria marches out, Cash brushes herself off and smirks at an uneasy faces, staring back at her. Gabriel sighs. Like I was saying, when we finish the posters, which are we really looking stellar, by the way. Is that a squid? It's a Ferris wheel. We'll split up and make the rounds to hang them up in high traffic areas on campus. I call dibs on the John. My poster will get plenty of eyes there. <sighs> Can't you take anything seriously? Right, because hanging up some doofy looking posters is of the utmost importance. Bonus Gabriel continues to stare down. Cass's grin slips off of her face, and you can feel the quiet ferociousness lurking beneath the surface. And just be honest, Golden Boy, you're mad you can't get rid of me as easily as you want. But guess what? I don't want to be here either. Oh, you don't look too sad about, about it. Ruining everyone else's day must make, take the sting out. Oh my god, please stop. Enough is enough. Are we going to make these signs or not? Because one poster of a salopid carrying a dozen little circles isn't going to cut it. As you stand your ground, gesturing towards the pile of blank poster boards on the ground, Jade crumples her poster. A fresh one is grabbed and starts again. Gabriel looks at you, shame-faced. Sorry, Parker. Yeah, no. Extra your activities are my personal hell. Sorry! If you're gonna be here, then at least you can do is help. If not, I'm sure Principal Yo. Fine, jeez. I'll make a freaking poster. She grabs a poster board, but gives Gabriel a scathing look as she as he holds out a marker to her. As if I might get infected with the always on time for class disease. Before he can retort, the door of the gym opens a crack, and Gabriel's friend Libby bugs her head in. Gabriel, it's time for the student government meeting. You got room for one more. I think I'm done with posters for today. Uh, big mood. I'll I'll be with you guys in a second. He hesitates, uh, clearly reluctant to leave you with Cass, and suddenly you flash him your sensory talisman, still and cool to the touch. Go, Cass and I'll make a few posters. Everything will be just fine. Yeah, don't worry, I'll behave. If only I didn't know you. I might actually believe that. The whole uptight, noble, uh, or upright noble protector act is so cute. But you're forgetting something. I know a secret about you that would make a sweet Parker here think twice about walking around wearing such a lovely antique. She fondles your talisman, her fingertips slightly brushing your skin, giving you goosebumps. His expression turns stormy. Shut the hell up, Cass. Gabriel, 
Cass lifts her hands in a disarming way, but a dangerous glint is still present in her eyes. There are some students that require your governance, President Aldar. Not a smart political move to make them wait, scram. The way she watches Gabriel makes her skin crawl. A predator fixated on their prey, and you angle yourself between them, taking Gabriel's arms. Hey, you're already late for your meeting. We'll talk later, okay? With some effort, he tears his eyes away from Cass and fixes them on you, his reluctance to leave you loud and clear. Call me if something happens. I will, I promise. Giving Cass one last warning look, Gabriel takes his leave. Once the door closes, you uh, whirl around on Cass, shaken but also furious. What the hell? I know vampires murdered his family. You lean in close, hissing the words in Cass's face. I'm starting to believe it might have been you personally. No comment, but I will say, if that's what he told you, then it's no wonder you take a side. But you should know, it was a murder. It was karma. Her icy voice makes you swallow, and you remember what she's capable of, but you have the distinct feeling that showing fear in front of her is the wrong move. Let me guess, Vampire Hunter? Whatever it was, Gabriel doesn't deserve you messing with him all the time. And what was all that about my bracelet? As for Gabriel to tell you, as for me, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy how long he can keep hiding it. Her self-satisfied smile tells you that she won't let you in on the joke anytime soon, and you let out a frustrated sigh. Well, if you're gonna be hanging around me so much, you at least owe me some answers, and lucky for you, I have plenty of questions. Whoa, 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 I fail to see how this turned into me owing you anything. You stand your ground and she examines you. You see a gleam of humor entering her eyes and it gives you a sinking feeling. But if it's answers you want, I can do that. If you prove yourself worthy first. Worthy how? Well, let's get out of here. We'll sneak off to the woods. The woods? The same woods where you attacked me? Mm, brings back memories, doesn't it? Yeah, of when you tried to kill me. But I didn't. That's gotta be a win, right? No. You turn back to your poster, and with a considerable effort, Cass forces a smile from her face. You know, you wouldn't be the only one in taking a risk here. Revealing our secrets to give you answers you're asking for goes against coven rules. And you know what happens if I get caught breaking the rules. She pulls up her sleeve, revealing the fresh burn mark from the other day. He wins, remembering the sounds of her screams. You want some answers? You need to put some skin in the game. My skin is in the game, and my mother's too. One false move and Astoria and Lewin will be the proud owners of two human hides. No. Fine. Cass slumps into the space next to you with an exaggerated sigh. I will just wait for Gabriel to come back and flutter around you like a nervous hen. Not my kink, but who am I to yuck your yum? I'm sorry, what? You talk about Gabriel an awful lot. I'm starting to think you're jealous. He doesn't have anything that I would be jealous of. The only thing remotely interesting about him is his infatuation with you. Sure, that's not what you're calling your inferiority complex. Oh, there's nothing about me that's inferior to him. Your eyes, f her eyes fall to your lips. Her smile still smug. But you're already finding that on your own, aren't you? You find yourself leaning closer, the easy banter thrilling fun and drawing you in. Slowly you ease back upright. I don't know what you're talking about. She straightens back up, goading, fixed, smiled, and her fixed in place. It's just the woods. It be with you the whole time, but I guess if you're scared. Cash shrugs and heads through the door. And as she goes, a chicken's gentle clucking reaches your ears. Immediately you cap your marker and climb to your feet. Fine, let's go. I'm only in a preview, I'm not a chicken. That'll do it. That that'll make you get up. The <laughs> with a grin, Cass holds the door open for you with a flourish. Whatever you say, new girl. You and Cass head out into the woods behind the school, then even further into the trees, and you waste no time getting down to brass tacks. Alright, first question. Why do you and the Vendatis hate the Clemens? 
Or is it the Clemens hate the Vendatis? Jeez, you're not one for small talk, are you? No, I'm sorry. Uh, did you want to hold hands as we strolled through the trees, reminiscing on old times? I mean, if that's what you're into... Without thinking, you give her a playful shove, and it's only when she looks at you that you realize that you what you've done. Sorry, I didn't know what I was thinking. I uh, know, I'm no, I'm irresistible. And to answer your question, I guess it's just uh, like asking why cats hate dogs. They're just different. The Clemens are boring. The uh, Burgoyes rule abiders who'd rather sip cold blood bags from the hospital than hunt for their blood like Satan intended. Oh, is that where we're going with this? Okay. Blood bags? So they're like vegetarian vampires? I think that's honorable. Of course you do. You're a Venadi, right? And damn proud of it. While the Clements like to pretend they're humans, we actually make use of all of our cool vampire abilities. Like what? You glance down to make sure of your footing, and when you look up, cast is gone. Where'd you... Where'd you go? Miss you so... I just had to. Looking for me? A streak of motion cuts through the trees and she zooms back to your side fast enough to make your head spin. She nods back the way she came. And we're not just fast. Throw something else as far as you can while I cover my eyes. I'll find it in no time. Car keys will make a sound. A rock, a stick. Yeah, toss a rock. Reach down, pick up a rock, throwing it with all your might into the woods. There, I threw it. As soon as the words are out, there's a blur in the corner of your eye, and then she's standing there in front of you, holding the rock. Um, just as good with paper and scissors. As she continues to brag about her abilities, a chilling realization hits you. If she's really fast, then she could have chased me and Gabriel down when we ran away the night of the party. Goosebumps appear in your arms as you remember running through the woods, afraid for your life. Woods that look remarkably similar to the ones you're standing in right. Hello, there's the new girl. Anybody home? Uh, sorry, I was just, um, thinking. Uh, do all the Vendatis use their skills to hunt humans to show off? Hunt humans. You feel a pit in your stomach and wonder if you've let her lead you straight into a trap. Then you feel your sensory talisman dangle coolly at your wrist. Not all the time. You were at the trial. There are rules. That's true. The whole thing seems pretty regulated. Cass looks at you with a smirk that you know only means trouble. Really? The ra reason I use these skills is to do this. Cass hooks an arm around your waist and leaps to the top of the cliff. You let out a shout, clinging to her as the ground disappears beneath your feet. Holy... Before your stomach is even done swooping, your feet touch down on solid ground again, causing a dull pain in your ankles and knees. You can't just do something like that. Can. Did. Now we're here. Funny how things happen, huh? Impervious to her glare, she only tightens her grip around your waist, motioning for her with her chin for you to look away from her. Pretty. And when you do, you can't help but gasp as far above the tree line, you see water sparkling as far as the eye can see stealing your breath a second time. This is unbelievable. Huh. You seem way more fascinated than you are afraid. Most humans would have run screaming by now. Where am I gonna run? I'm on a cliff. Well... I'm not like most humans. You chance a glance at her. She smiles at you. Possibly the first genuine smile you've seen from her. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. She motions at the waterfall you're at the edge of, the water gushing over and tumbling down to a lake a hundred or so feet below. Jump with me. Are you insane jumping off here took years off my joints? Do that in reverse and I die. That's not how this works. Not if you drank a drop of my blood, you wouldn't. Uh, okay. You go still, dumbfounded. Not sure if you heard correctly, but she just stares evenly at you, expression dead serious. What do you mean? One drop should be enough to experience a vampire's heightened abilities for a little while. You get the speed, the strength. Crazy jumping abilities, you'd be invisible. You'd be living. 
crazy jumping abilities. You'd be invincible. You'd be living. I look over the waterfall the lake, a dizzying distance below, feeling nervous and tempted. This could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I doubt that. How about I sweeten the deal even more? You jump, and I'll give you this. You see a glint of gold out of the corner of your eye, and you tear your gaze from the waterfall to see what's dangling from her fingertips. Is that another talisman? The gold one this time. What? You didn't think Golden Boy was the only one with access to these little treasures, did you? You're offering me that if I... If you jump, and I promise you, you'll love it. Diamond choice. A drop of blood for... Uh, for vampire abilities and a talisman? I'm game. It's a bit weird, don't you think? That she's offering us all this. Knew you had it in you. You watch Transfix as she extends her fangs and bites her thumb. A single drop of crimson blood dwells on her fingertip. Vampire blood is potent stuff. A little bit and you'll boost your strength. Too much of it and you'll, uh, your frail human body wouldn't be able to take it. But a small drop like this should be enough for you to handle. She holds out her finger to you, watching you expectingly. Your breath catches you realize what you're about to do. Your heart thrums in anticipation. In for a penny, in for a pound. You take her hand, pull it closer, feeling a surge of boldness. Her pupils dilate as you lean forward and lick her fingertip. You're just one surprise after another, aren't you, new girl? Her fangs never retract, and the look on her face can only be uh, described as hungry. But you're aware of the danger at this moment, and you can't help but... Uh, find it exhilarating. I aim to please. You let her hand go, feeling a surge of smugness as she has to blink a few times to clear the gay glazed look in her eyes. So, how do you feel? You wait a moment, really letting the sharp metallic taste wash over your tongue. Like I have blood in my mouth? Blech. Oh, not the sweetest necker you were expecting it to be? It tastes like every time I've ever bitten my tongue. Must sting to know your precious superior vampire blood tastes like an old human's. Feel a sudden rush of vertigo and gasp. The lightheadedness passes, and every sense is vividly heightened from the feel of the wind whipping past your face to the sight of bubbles forming in the pool below. You take a breath, and you can smell everything the tang of the distant ocean, the earthy scent of the forest, and cast. The sense faint, a little wild and invigorating. What was that you were saying about superior blood? Even her voice sounds different, like you can hear more tones in it. She grins at your wonder, and all you can do is blurt out, Oh my god. It makes your human existence seem like a pale, washed up version in comparison, huh? But before you can answer, Cash shrugs out of her shirt and starts to untie her shoes. What, what are you doing? Would you expect her to jump into the water? Like that? Getting ready to jump, I'm not getting my clothes wet. With a roll of her eye, she kicks her pants aside and then walks up right to the edge of the cliff and she smirks over her shoulder at you. I approve. Ready to jump? Fine. Hang on, I don't want to get my clothes wet either. And, hardly believing what you're doing, you peel off your clothes until you're standing there, on the edge of the cliff, next to a vampire, in just your underwear. Well, Mom did tell me to live a little. Oh, yeah. Are you really the same human that ran screaming from me a few days ago? Eh, yeah, fight or flight instincts, you know. You feel a slight thrill of the way her eyes take you in. And though your first instinct is to wrap your arms protectively around yourself, you stand up taller instead. I guess I'm just not as scared of you anymore. A shiver runs through you at the grin that elicits on her face, and you can't help but enjoy it. Maybe it's a drop of vampire blood and making you bolder, but because looking down at the water far below, you feel the weightlessness and indestructible for the first time like ass is equal. There goes nothing. Show me what you got first. Watch and learn, human. I do have a name. She jumps through the air and performs an intricate dive filled with twists and flips that would normally be too fast for your human eyes to even register. A 
thanks to your new vampire abilities, you take in each moment. You focus carefully, memorizing every mo move, certain that with strength and grace coursing through your limbs, you can replicate it. Cass's head pops out of the water down below, and she shouts up to you. Are you coming or what? No sweat. You take a deep breath, leap off the edge of the cliff, and the air whips past you as you plummet. But you don't even worry. Your brain and body are working double time. You match her flip for flip, twist her for twist as you fall through the air. The feeling more exhilarating than anything you've ever felt in your life. I can't believe it, I'm really doing this. As you complete your final rotation, you cut through the water and head down, down until you reach the bottom of the lake. You place your feet firmly onto the sand, feeling the power course through your body as you bend your knees and then shoot up to the surface, breaking through the water with an exhilarating gasp. Woohoo! It's pretty. Catching your breath, you look over at Cass, unable to get the huge grin off of your face. Well, how did I do? Not bad, but your technique could use some work. As you sweep your arm across the water, your newfound strength turns your splash into an actual wave that crashes over her. Oh, shit! Swept up in the crest, she gets carried back over a hundred feet before being pulled under. Really? Really were that strong? Oops. You watch the surface of the water calm for several moments until she pops her head out of the water near the edge of the lake. Hell of an arm on you there, human. You make a muscle with your bicep and kiss it while cast one of the distance back to you in almost no time at all. I've been trying to get out a new regimen. Guess it's been working. She shakes her head roughly to side to side, trying to free some water from her ear. Alright, lesson learned about giving the overly enthusiastic human super strength. Big mistake. Shh. No need to be jealous, just because I'm taking to this life like a natural, even if I did just get a drop of it on you. Oh, is that what you think? Well, I think having you on an even playing field means that I don't have to hold back when I do this. She whips up her arms, cups her hand. And what do you... She whips her hand across the surface of the water, sending a huge wave surging towards you. Gas! Before you can succumb to the panic, your vampire instincts take over. Everything seems to slow, the speed of the rushing water turning to a crawl. The rush of strength surging through you slash out on the arm, an arm breaking through the wave and cutting it harmlessly in two around you. Hmm, nice try. Your heart races and you laugh, thrilled by the strange and wonderful power. But as the remnants of the wave splash down next to you, you catch your broken reflection in the water, and then suddenly a thought occurs to you. Cass, do I look any different? Fangs, silver eyes. You try to see your reflection more clearly, but there are too many ripples, even for your advanced eyesight. Cass just snorts and shakes her head. Nope, you still look like any boring other human. Oh, come on. There's nothing wrong with humans. I think you've just got a superiority complex. You're absolutely right. Are all vampires as modest as you? Mm, even among vampires, I'm one of a kind. Yeah, well, with everything I just did, I'm one of a kind among humans. That you know of. You kick your legs and launch yourself out of the water using your newfound strength, coming back down to the water with a splash. You and I are basically on equal footing right now. Pretty incredible, huh? Yeah, yeah, new girl, you amaze me. Suddenly, she grabs your waist under the water, pulling you tight to her. Before you can even gasp, you see a blur moment, and then something brushes barely perceptible against your cheek. What are you... You had a leaf. You realize she's holding a small, soggy leaf in her free hand. A second later, you realize on her other hand is still your waist, holding you close enough to feel every line of her body against yours. Face flaming, you push against her shoulder, and she lets you go, fingertips skimming across your skin. You don't have to be so grabby about it. Judging by your heart hammering away like a drum roll, I'd say you don't mind. Scowling, you use your elevated hearing to listen for her heartbeat and find it beating steady and calm. Oh, so hearts beat in this one. Yeah, well, judging by how touch-feely you've been today, I'd say you're having... You like having me in your arms. This close, and you're a vampire sight. You catch every shift of expression as it crosses her face. Widened pupils, a glint of hunger, a shock of surprise. 
quickly wrangle up in his smirk. Touche. And with a far too pleased look, she pushes back through the water and climbs out onto the bank of the lake. You swim over and she flops down in a patch of sunlight. So, obviously the whole vampires are weak to sun thing is a total myth. She just smiles smugly before patting the patch of grass beside her. Come on, I've uh, got something for you. I, I like how she's just noticing the whole sunlight now. It is middle of the day in school. You climb out, letting your eyes trail over your glistening body until you catch her smug grin. Something other than an eye feast, I mean. It better be my talisman. Ugh, demand. And lucky for you, I like humans with a little bite. She rummages in the pockets of her discarded jacket and then pulls out the small golden trinket. How did the clothing get down here versus the cliff we just drop off, dropped off of that's like 100 feet? Magic. Ma magic. Yeah, yeah. I'd say you earn those. But be careful how you handle it. This is a... Gimme. You wrap your hand around the talisman, compressing the jewel in the center, and a dizzying burst of light shoots through the trees. Turn it off! Turn it off! Wincing, she manages to press the jewel again. Turning the light off, she blinks the lingering glare out of her eyes, grumpily. This is the disorientation talisman, and as you can imagine, the light isn't going to make you any friends. But it'll definitely clear the path of your enemies. She carefully attaches it to your bracelet alongside the other. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I thought the other one was a silver one. Okay, I'm a little confused, but okay. Would have swore they described it as silver, but... By the way, is it even allowed for humans to drink vampire blood? You should know by now that I don't really play by the rules. It'll have to stay our little secret, though. The twinkle in her eye vanishes, replaced by something intense enough to make you catch your breath. If you know what's best for both of us. You shiver as you glance at her scars and you turn your attention to your new talisman, wondering what it means that Cass broke the rules for you. After air drying for a while, Cass's blood eventually wears off and the two of you hike back the way you came. Oh, I honestly thought I'd be dead by now. Cass is certainly capable of it, but she wouldn't kill me after all this, would she? Your mind wanders back to your mother's notes and the mention of a second animal. And it just means she wouldn't, uh, or doesn't mean she'd stop something or someone who would... Glance over to find Cass, even thought, and you steal yourself to ask her the question that's been at the back of your mind all day. Do you only think of humans as food? Your voice breaks with uh, her reverie, and you wait for her in agonizing silence as she realizes you're talking to her. Then longer, as she mulls it over, finally she sighs. Well, it, it's probably really better I, if I put it this way. There are two humans. There are two types. Ones who live inside Crimson Beach and ones who don't. Your stomach turns at the answer, and suddenly your words leave your mouth without thinking. So, I'm... nothing special? Even after you spent all day trying to impress me? You wish. From where I'm sitting, it looks like you're trying to impress me. So all that talk about me having guts and you being impressed with me was a lie? One false move and you'll just murder me too? What the hell, new girl? I thought we were having a good time. You know she's just being her typical honest flippin' self, but you can't help but feel a pang of hurt. Recklessly, you let one more question fly. And I thought you were the only vampire in the woods the night of the party, but isn't that that isn't true either, is it? She stops short. Her jaw practically dropping to the ground as she turns to face you. What did you say? You're covering for another vampire, I'm sure of it. It's only been a theory, but her shocked reaction and all but confirms that she lets out a low whistle. This another one of your mom's theories? No, it's mine. Then let me give you a little bit of advice. Don't ever ask that question again. Your heart rate picks up at the obvious threat, but you set your chin determined, unwilling to show any fear. Or what? You wouldn't want Luan and Astoria here, and they're just still talking about the murder after the oh-so-clear warning they gave during your trial. Wow, you'd go that far? 
Too bad for you, I'm not the only one with a secret. After all, you wouldn't want Lewin and Astoria to know you're protecting a rogue vampire, would you? She looks at you with amusement. You're even gutsier than I thought, new girl. It's just you and a vampire all alone in the woods, and here you are, threatening me. You won't do anything to me. She touches her tongue to the tip of one sharp tooth. That a gamble you're willing to bet your life on? You barely have time to process that thought before she suddenly steals, then shoots an arm out, grabbing you and pulling you close. You thrash against her vice-like grip. Let me go. Would you shut up? We're about to be... At the same time, you feel a burning hot sensation coming from your sensory talisman. You don't have time to react before a blur shoots out of the trees. Um, hello, redheaded. Attacked. The vampire grabs Cass, knocking you to the ground and pinning Cass to a tree with a snarl. It's over for the both of you now. I'm sorry, who are you and why are you attacking me? Well, technically, both of us, but, you know, I digress. Without further ado, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content. Without further ado, I'll say the following. One, you can always hit that join button and the thank button. Both of those buttons will also directly support me via YouTube, if you are able to. If not, that's fine. Please make sure to like and share and subscribe. So I'll say the following. Um, I, one person dropped a comment about how I'm favoring Cass and that I should give Gabriel more time and whatnot. Um, yeah, no, listen. The book is clearly leaning towards your vampire, right? There's no choice, right? There was no... It's the illusion of choice. We're not given a choice on if we want to go with Gabriel or if we go with Cass. Remember that. We're not given a choice. Um, so here you are spending time again with Cass versus spending time with Gabriel. So this makes the third chapter that this, this has done this. Um, so there's literally and figuratively nothing I can do about it. So as much as some of you are like, well, why not, you know, find favor in Gabriel and, you know, go, you know, pursue a little with him, you know, make it even or whatnot. L literally and figuratively, Pixelberry is not giving us a choice. Pixelberry is legendary for this illusion of choice. Literally and figuratively, they push a, a, a love interest or a narrative at you, and you're forced to play along, until eventually they listen to the community, hopefully, in some books they don't, and around, you know, chapter like five, six maybe, you'll get spent a little time with the other person, and then they throw you back in the other direction. Like, this, this is just how this works. So, you're probably not going to see any time with Gabriel until, like I said, at least five or six and then you'll get it for a chapter or two instead of it being on and off, right? Like, I'm a person that's like, okay, if there's two love interests, I'll spend one chapter with them, and clearly I'm not going to skip any diamond choices, but if I'm left between one or the other, I'm going to pick one in one chapter, and then in the next chapter, I'll pick the other one. You know, make it fair, right? Depending on how I'm feeling and, and all the things that are considered and maybe the chapter in and of itself plays a role up to that moment but typically i'll go one and then the other and again but the choices done like that are so rare and far and in between that it's like a blue moon so again just wanted to tell you guys that get that point across without further ado love your beautiful faces thank you for the support on the channel and i'll catch you all later peace out